to the light. I'm joking. Welcome back. My phone froze on the most ridiculous funny face ever and I hope that you all got to see that because it was obnoxious looking. <laughs> so my phone keeps freezing on like the most ridiculous like scenes. Like I'm like <laughs> so I'm trying not to judge it. I'm trying to laugh with it instead of judge it. And I'm trying not to allow anger to become <laughs> over me for Periscope. But I'm good. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of trying to remember what I was talking about, but I think we were talking about the Indigo children and about how... Oh, and how I was, I was asking... You know, I was talking about the Matrix and how I was just, like, blown away. And, and then, like, the... Uh, Inception came out, and were you also like, holy crap, this is amazing, because that's how I was, and I had watched it like a million times, and so I learned a lot from those movies, and I really like the ones that, that challenge your thoughts. Okay, so I think we're like halfway there. I, I took a lot more notes in the middle, so. 120 I wrote... Through faith, which will give sufficient energy to achieve. You were a ghost? Oh, I was wondering why you weren't um, answering. I just honestly figured you had, like, popped in and then, like, popped out. Lisa, <laughs> did you have anything to say that um, you wanted us to talk about on anything I was talking about earlier? Because I'll, I'll pause for a moment for you to, for you to type. faith which will give sufficient energy just keep going okay well I can see you now so that's the good news <laughs> I'm, I hate whenever that happens um, so through faith which will give sufficient energy to achieve success against all odds direction will be maintained the realization of goal is yoga is a matter of time and it was talking about like how you don't You'll be able to direct it without any, like, distraction. And faith is the unshakable conviction that we can arrive at that goal. And so I, I just made a, a side note for myself about how, you know, whenever I lost my studio, uh, my dance studio, then it could have, like, broken me. And it didn't. I just stayed very convinced that whatever it was that I had in me, I don't have a name for it, that it just would keep going. And that was the first time almost ever in my life that I did not face like an unknown without complete fear and like discouragement and depression. Of course, with some pizzazz. <laughs> um, of course, I was sad. I think that's like natural um, to be sad, but I, I like it. I just kind of accepted it. I, I, I remember this very odd feeling coming over me, as if I was like watching my life in like a movie theater. It, it was just like. I saw the things happening and I just kind of disconnected and said, you know, these things are happening, I don't really understand why, and they're just going to happen anyways, so I'm not going to, like, freak out and, like, just become, like, so distraught about it. I'm just going to see what happens. And, and it was crazy because um, it was very up and down at the time that I was losing my studio. I had quit my job which like put me in like an upward high. Yeah, you could tell it was right for your ultimate path. Yeah. Um, it was like I quit my job, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to make so much money because I'm going to put my passion and all my stuff into this studio. I won't have to worry, blah blah blah. And then like after a month or two and I saw that it was not working and I was having to take more out of my savings to continue doing it, it was a relief. <laughs> um, trust me. 
And then it was like kind of like getting down. I was like, oh man, it's not really working. And then I had to make a decision of whether or not to like stay at the same location or not. And I said, okay, I'm like kind of hitting rock bottom. But, you know, then I got an idea that I would, you know, try to ask for like a lower rate. Um, and I, I was like, okay, yeah, like, I, I'm going to get this. I'll just get a lower rate because they're so empty here. There will be no purpose of them not to give me a lower rate. It would just be stupid to kick me out if I can at least tell them what I can afford and what the area is actually affording. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this. And then I got the email from the lawyer saying, nope, you can just be gone. And I was like, and then, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well, screw you anyways. It's okay. I am, I don't want to be here anymore anyways. So I'm going to go find a place. So I looked so many places and I was like, I'm going to find the most awesome alternative option ever. And it's going to be so much less stress because I'm just going to get a smaller place because I don't need this much poles and stuff. And it's going to be like hip. It's going to be like in a warehouse district instead of like this stupid retail areas <laughs> and I was like yeah I'm gonna find it and I was working on it every day and I was like in the zone and I was like imagining all these places that would work perfect hey Shell how are you doing and then I was I found a place and it were it was gonna be perfect it was small it was like so cheap that I I literally could have had the girls that I have right now that I'm teaching in their home, I could have just had them and it would have paid for itself. It was perfect. It was going to be great. And I fell in love with it. I literally like marked out your energy is low. Well, are you tired? Could you go to sleep or what time is it there? Um, and then I had like marked out on my floors where I would organize everything and put everything and I was like in the zone and I told everyone you're just sad well don't let it be you just notice the sadness and say you know today's a sad day cry it out and tomorrow you might not be sad it's okay I was telling them earlier that I think sadness is just normal you just don't like let it overcome you you know what I mean you're just like okay I just want to cry today I, I do that still I still wake up and cry a lot of times <laughs> um, and so then I like had told everyone I was gonna move and I was like yes I found a place and my excitement was going back up and then they literally like just didn't contact me again and I had to contact them and the kid I was working with who was like my age who was even more excited than me because he was like oh I'm a real estate guy but I actually teach like Taekwondo and I could like rent the space out from you and I was like this is awesome and he told me like he like had talked to the owners and they're like no we can't rent that place out like that's too small it's not worth it it's not worth the little amount of income that we're gonna get to put our time into it so I didn't get it and at that point I was like okay I'm done and so then I said goodbye and that was a very hard time oh and actually I didn't even that wasn't even the last one I said goodbye to that area and then I talked to my longtime gymnastics coach the one that taught me when I was three that my mom still works for who owns another place here like where I live not the city that I taught in and he said that he had a place that would probably work and it would like be split between me and this like uh, fitness guy and that it would it would be just enough space blah 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 and yet again I got excited I was getting it all set out I literally asked all of my students like would you travel here at this rate you know like what are your thoughts should I do this and it, it seemed like it was going to be fine. And then he pretty much just fell through. And he's somebody that I've known since I was a kid. So that was really, like, disheartening. And I was so depressed by then that I was just like, okay, no more. I'm not doing this to my brain <laughs> anymore, like, or my heart. And so I just said, okay, I, I, give, I give in, world. I'm just going to be... And, and then it's like the world didn't end. Whoa, like imagine that. It didn't just blow up the next day. And, and 
I had to move and I lost my apartment and I lost all of my beautiful studio but even though I was so attached to those things it life just kept happening and then relationship wise the same thing has happened you know I had all these dreams and thoughts of relationships and the more and more that I just became like disengaged as far as like what should be and just let things be it was like things just started being better so I think that's a really important lesson to learn but apparently like it can be very painful I guess it's like when they pepper spray like police officers so they understand like how painful it is I feel like that's what life does to you <laughs> it's like here's what a big punch in the gut feels like okay now you can handle it go about your day and and now I'm much tougher than I ever was it just it doesn't affect me anymore like if I if I have an idea that just kinda like bombs it's like okay I'll just do something else um, getting closer to the end. Let's see. I, in order to relate to God, it is necessary to regularly address him properly and reflect on his qualities. Oh, this is where it was kind of talking about <laughs> mechanical repetition in prayer is worthless. And that's so true. And so, uh, I'm not going to really go over the religious part of this book because it's, it's not really something that affects me as much but I can understand what he's talking about as far as if you're very connected religiously to a practice how um, it would help you understand how to use that as like uh, an upper for you but as far as like the whole mechanical repetition of anything is worthless not just prayer meditation if you're just sitting there and you're saying well this is meditation but then you're like thinking about what color nail polish you should put on in 10 minutes that's yeah, that's pointless you're just wasting your time don't do that I mean if you're finding that you keep thinking about what color nail polish to put on but then like finding that center again and attempting to not think about it at least or like letting it flow away and not like latching on then that's not pointless I hope you understand what I'm saying but same for physical practice if we just do down dog I mean I went over this earlier so watch my replay about down dog but if we just do the same thing over and over and over and we don't even think about what's going on then there's no purpose of doing that move it, it's doing nothing for you so why are you doing it but if you actively are like actually doing the position, you're actively like thinking of every single part of your body, what's going on, then you're going to get so much more out of it. Even if you are thinking of the same thing every single time, that's where that whole like repetition and habit forms rather than like, I'm in down dog and I'm not thinking of anything about my body I'm just sitting here and I'm gonna think about what I would like for dinner tonight you know you're giving me peace of mind I'm glad <laughs> I'm hoping that it will not stress you out more <laughs> and hopefully like by thinking of other stuff it'll remind you how like really sadness is just like such like insignificant thing compared to the rest of life just noticing that the mind is thinking a thought separates you from it and brings you back to the present moment yeah I call my shit out all the time I am I'm telling you this whole like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing is really in my head because I I can notice a lot of the things that I do that I'm like don't do that stop doing that and I'll, um, I guess it's one way that I teach. I'm kind of like really like get to it, like nip it in the bud, you know? You don't need to try to stop thinking. I'm trying to think of what you mean by that. Yeah, like, like you're always going to be thinking, but more like uh, think about what you're doing rather than letting it just be free, right? I think maybe. <laughs> I feel like if I had kids... The best people that influence me always leave, and it's hard to f fire, uh, find inspiration to, to inspire myself. Why? Why do you find it hard to find that you are inspirational, Lisa? Because 
if you were here earlier when we were talking about how when you really are like just fully doing like practicing yoga, you're just like one with everything. There's no me, there's no you, there's no I, it's just everything. So those people you're saying that you're finding inspiration from are no different than you. They're just a perception of your reality. So find how you were able to perceive them as inspiring and then apply that how to you. Do you know what I mean? I hope you do. Uh, we talked about the four agreements about how uh, Mariana said just let a thought not settle in and grow way off tangent is kind of what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that, Jules. I totally agree. Yeah, because you, you know, you're never going to have control over your mind, like, really. Like, it's, it's going to keep happening, but it's, like, just controlling, like, your reactions, I guess, right? I think you would say. And what I was going to say about <laughs> the children thing like, I feel like if I ever had children, oh my gosh, I'm trying to shake up my lemon water and my water's going everywhere. If I ever had kids, kids are going to be like freaking crazy no matter what, right? Like they're going to run all over the place. And I feel like that's what our brain does. It's just like all over the place. It's, there's not like saying, stop running, little two-year-old, because it's just like, that's a silly joke to them, you know? But instead, if you don't focus on like what it should not be doing, like don't think about that, <laughs> and instead are like, okay kids, let's go get a snack, and then let's go like pet the dog, and then let's go play outside and then let's go like do this like you kind of like give them like direction not like precise exactly how they have to do it but kind of like this is what we're gonna do and like you're happy about it and they're like okay okay and I think you know you've seen a kid and if you're like yeah we're, we're gonna do this then the kid's like yeah I'm gonna do that but if you're like please just stop running then the kid's gonna be like no, I don't want to stop running. So I feel like that's our brain. Instead of like saying like, stop thinking about nail polish brain. And instead saying, okay brain, we're going to do this move. And then we're going to breathe. And then we're going to like focus on our toes. And then we're going to come into this position and then we're going to meditate and try to focus on like one single point. Then your brain is like gonna listen, you know what I mean? Like I, this has at least worked for me for kids because kids are really, I don't know, they just listen to me pretty well. I even had like an ex-boyfriend who had a six-year-old daughter. She was quite um, a sassy pants to put it nicely, and I could not stand the way that she talked to my boyfriend at the time, and uh, I just don't even know how I handled that actually, but when I became like stepmom version, um, I had no problem with her behaving. She wanted to behave with me. It was like because I gave her direction and I was, it was, I, I didn't even bribe her. Like, I, I did give her ideas of like, well, if we do this, yeah, my mind is a sassy pants. <laughs> um, but it's like, I kind of like told her, well, we could work up to getting some sort of like cool thing, but we got to like behave to do it. Not like if you behave, then you're going to get this. Like, I don't like the trade-off version as much as like, you know, I think we can work towards something good. She was like, what would you like me to do now, Lisa? <laughs> and it was awesome. Like, I was like, success. I was like so happy. And then whenever he would come home, she'd be like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and then I'd be like, yeah, you are. So I feel like, yeah, your brain is totally like that. And if you treat it like a little sassy pants kid, 
who you just like scream at and like let run free, then it's not gonna listen. It it is gonna keep going like crazy, and you're just gonna keep thinking about the most ridiculous stuff in your head <laughs> all day long. But if you put direction to it and really like see, allow it to be seen, like why it would be a positive idea, and especially for like kids and sassy pants mindsets. If you make it seem like it's going to be the most fun, ridiculous thing ever, then it's going to just do it freely. It, you do not even have to say it more than once. That would be my take on that. Uh, in daily life, we see people around who are happier than we are, people who are less happy. Some may be doing praiseworthy things and others causing problems, whatever may be our usual attitude towards such people and their actions. If we can be pleased with others who are happier than ourselves, compassionate towards those who are unhappy, joyful with those doing praiseworthy things and remain undisturbed by uh, the errors of others, our mind will be very tranquil. And earlier, I already pointed this out, but yes, it's like such a big one that if you haven't read The Four Agreements, it is on my book list. If you go to boxedge.org and click on books, Four Agreements is like life-changing for me, at least. What is that? <laughs> it's like a megaphone. <laughs> um, if you know The Four Agreements, then you know one of them is don't take anything personally. And that's exactly what I see that is. It's, it's like... If somebody's doing something good, give them a high five. It has nothing to do with you. If they are sucking at life and just doing horrible things, like turn on the news, like don't don't waste your mind being like you're a terrible person. Like that's just wasting everyone's time and just if that's their own problem. Don't take it personally to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if it made a, a noise. You're welcome, Mel. Or she Shell, sorry. Um, and then same idea with, like, people who are, like, happier, you know. It's cool. They're happier. I I hope... Have you read that book, um, Shell? The Four Agreements? Because when I was really sad, that is what I read. And it really helped me. Yeah. Did you read... The next one, The Mastery of Love. And does your sadness have anything to do with love? Because I would like to know. I'm almost done with my notes. I'm going to come back to this one because it's kind of like a big one. And then... Alright, almost... we got two more. Uh, that one was really awesome. If you feel like you ever have love um, issues in your mind and like you find there are problems yes my mother hurt me verbally man and so there's definitely the whole you know don't take anything personally you know that if you've read the four agreements if she hurt you verbally it had nothing to do with you it had everything to do with her you know what I mean so no reason to be sad Ta-da! It's all gone, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, the, the Mastery of Love is the, the like next one, I think. Um, and it really helped me kind of progress my mindset um, towards like relationships of all sort and love. And yeah, it hurt your ego, but it didn't actually hurt you, Shell. You're still you. You're still awesome. Try to like disconnect that from you. And say that she said a mean thing, but it wasn't, she hurt you. When it is the closest one to you, definitely read that one. Yeah. I understand. If you have the four agreements, try to read it again. Try to kind of like, to remove yourself from that and uh, kind of see it from a third person perspective. What's this? Okay, I have two th notes left. His knowledge is no longer based on memory or inference. It is spontaneous, direct, and at both a level and an intensity that is beyond ordinary. Um, I put this note around here, but I it kind of like was for all of them. Um, when we're talking about the yoga practice and really just becoming like detached and 
kind of like becoming like so not affected by like the external sources and just just being I I saw it as like I'm a math nerd I haven't done math stuff in a while but it's definitely the way that my brain tends to think and you know in math how you would have like a problem and you could make it shorthand I try to think of things that I'm grateful for when people hurt me shop I think that's a good idea that's exactly something that I did too yep I get hurtful words thrown at me all the time and when I oh here's another one um, shell while I'm thinking of it think of your body as like a big thing of Teflon so like you now have Teflon skin do you know what Teflon is I hope it's like that super slick stuff that like it doesn't stick to anything um, so you have Teflon and somebody says a hurtful thing to you and you see it coming at you you don't even have to move because you have Teflon skin it's coming at you and it's just gonna go whoop, and it's just gonna like graze right by you it didn't go through you it didn't actually get you it was directed at you but you know what it's just gonna fly right by and you just kinda laugh because you're like okay that was supposed to kinda like affect me I guess but really it's just it, I'm just Teflon, so you can throw whatever you want at me. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I learned that from psychologists, um, YouTubes on narcissism. <laughs> so it's actually one way of dealing with narcissists because they will throw very mean things at you all the time and pretty much uh, put their problems on you and, and say the things that are bothering them on you. It's very common, and that's one way of dealing with it, so it, it doesn't pull you down. And if you can, like, do that, then it's it's pretty funny, actually. Because you kind of, like, are in your own little game that nobody else knows about. And you're like, let's see how many hits I can take, and still Teflon is not going to break. So, imagine back in the scenario where you got something said to you, <laughs> and then imagine you were Teflon, and then it might make it seem like so much less um, big of a deal. My college roommate and I made a comic about a superhero called Usurin Woman. Usurin Woman? What is that? What was I saying? Super slow. <laughs> oh, math. Okay. Very big help to me now, love. Thanks. I'm going to go meditate. See you ladies later. Peace, Shell. You're Teflon. You can do that in meditation too. Those thoughts can just be like Tefloned out. Oh, Yusurin, yeah, okay, I do, I do remember that name of Volotion now. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so the math thing, think of like how you had like those complex problems and it was like you could make like something super super crazy and like then like shorten it into like shorthand into something like really small but then sometimes you had to go and like do the opposite um or say no okay let me back up you found an answer but the answer was not the most like purest form of the answer so you end up with like an answer and you're like okay I understand what this is talking about but then you had to like keep breaking down this one section until it was like broken up into like the most like raw pieces of like X and Y and plus and minus and times versus all these like crazy cosines and multiplication and if you did trigonometry or calculus I hope that you have an idea of what I'm talking about and I feel that yoga is like literally doing that like you are in life where it's like this crazy math problem and you're like what the hell does that mean and the more and more that you break it up into those small pieces and you're like okay well I don't need that crap like has something to do with the equation but it's not really what I'm focused on and then keep breaking this one down and like oh okay like here's a bunch of other junk let's get rid of that and then break this one down and then eventually you're just X period 
You know what I mean? So that's kind of like one way that I thought about how you're kind of practicing yoga. You're just separating out all of that stuff and then eventually you're just like this very simple, very, very simple thing. Not very complicated. The rest of the world made it complicated, but really you were just X. And I've never really heard people talk about yoga and math together, <laughs> but that came to my head and that made a lot of sense, so I hope it made sense to you. Here's my last thing. So, and this was the one that I had to like write down because I was saying I had a story. Um, and I put it over by, so initially because of our past experiences and ideas, our understanding of the object is distorted. Everything that has been heard, read, or felt may interfere with our perception. So pretty much it was talking, this was like 142 by the way, um, it was talking about perception and how, I think earlier I was kind of saying like, oh, like I'm seeing this screen, like I see a face and I see this color teal and I see this peach color, but really color is nothing other than something that we just gave a name to. It, it's not really a thing. It's it's just an idea and the craziest thing happened like a month ago and I didn't really I don't know if I told anyone about it no I don't think I did my boyfriend doesn't really understand some of the concepts that go through my head so do you remember when I went to the like um, beach with the dead tree and like he had to take me out on a paddle board to get to it and there was like this crazy like dead tree behind me and we were on this like island and you could see the palm trees and I don't know if you were there or if anyone who's watching the replay was there but if you go to my Instagram you can find the dead tree picture and everyone was like that's such a beautiful tree and I loved it well after I was practicing there um, it was really no, yeah, not long. It did. I didn't know it was an island. Oh, yeah, it was an island. <laughs> uh, we pad. We had a paddle board to it, and he dropped me off. So, I had not been meditating for very long at that point. You know, that was kind of like right when I started Periscope. It was probably like my third or fourth scope ever, and. This is all very new to me as far as this actual trying to meditate and like making it a lifestyle habit. But I knew that by doing it, it would it would really start a process in my brain. And that was probably only like a month after I had like gone to therapy and she taught me how to meditate and stuff like that. So I'm on this like beautiful island. And he is fishing, just doing his thing, really not around me, so there's no there's no distraction of any other person around me. There weren't a lot of boats at this place, which is also a distraction all the time, and the weather was like very calm that day. And it was getting close to sunset, and after I scoped and practiced, and I think my phone died, um, I just sat on my mat in the sand and really tried meditating and just letting things just be like not thinking of something not I didn't even focus on my breath to the point where I just was just sitting there and I tried closing my eyes but I found that it was kind of bright out because the Sun was setting um, in like the distant um, area of my site. So instead I decided to just meditate with my eyes open and there right in front of me it was like water and then there were trees like really far out so they were pretty small looking from my site and then there was clouds and empty sky. And I remember like that the clouds were kind of making like a bluish tint and like pinkish tint kind of rising up through them. And the sun was like on the other side. So I could see the sun, but it wasn't like directly in front of me. So I'm sitting there and I remembered 
I've done that at places. It is it's really nice, and I do that commonly. However, this time I noticed that as I sit outside and I meditate with my eyes open, most of the time I end up finding something to look at, and I'm like, oh, look at that bird. And even though I'm not really thinking of the bird, I notice that I'm like watching the bird or I'm like looking at the tree like specifically over here yonder or I'm looking at one cloud and I had been listening to like guided meditations or something at that point and I, I remember them saying like try not to focus on one thing like try to just kind of gaze and, and just not focus on one thing and so I, I did that and I I didn't let myself focus on anything specific and I looked right where the like trees and the like clouds met so that line and the weirdest thing happened because I was so relaxed and like so not concerned about what anything was doing or what anything looked like or what I was hearing or feeling and I could feel, <laughs> this will sound weird, I could like feel my pupils just like, mwah, like they were like morphing and just like so open. I think that they were probably dilating is probably what was physically going on, but I don't even know. That all of a sudden, the line between the trees and the clouds got really, really, really bright, <laughs> and like everything in front of me just melted into this like, no. <laughs> I didn't blink for like a few minutes because I just like really let them relax to where they weren't like open and they weren't like closed, they were just like, they were just like this, like stoner eyes. And... The, it was so crazy looking and it was just like all the colors were like meshing into one and there was the brightness is what got me because the sun was like this way not like this way so there was no explanation as to like why it kept looking brighter and it just kept going and getting brighter and brighter and brighter until I just felt like this like overwhelming like aura in front of me and everything in my body just like stopped feeling. It was just so like silent. That is one of the things I've learned you can do in yoga practice that I had memories of of doing as a child, I'm guessing maybe you'll say. A little kid in first grade. Yeah. And that that's kind of, I felt like I had done that too, and it, it did, it brought me back to like that time when you could just like be free to look and just not care what you were looking at, and it just kind of meshed into like this one thing, and I, and I felt as though right then perception like left me, and I was that thing just... Oh, what did I t I was keeping from my eyes blinking and looking at one spot. Yeah. It's just like it's talking about, you know, whenever you you came into that that point where it was like nothing in the past affected what you were thinking and it was just raw right then and like so it was it was not like sight it was just being and it was like taking over um my brain like it was so crazy feeling it was so cool and i was like how did i just do that and i actually lost i lost it and i kind of snapped back to reality for a second because i think like a wave or something um crashed down and then like i I imagine that's kind of like a reflex for survival, like we're like, okay, are we safe? Okay, the, the wave was not a danger, let's go back. And I noticed that once I like 
recognized what the sound was and I saw that it was like nothing I needed to worry about, then I was able to quickly get back to exactly how I was feeling and and then it faded away and, and I realized it was kind of like <laughs> I couldn't handle it <laughs> anymore. It was like my endurance or something was low, but it was amazing and I haven't really talked about it because I didn't really know how to interpret it and this kind of reading this stuff has has made me feel like I I understand exactly what it's talking about where you just you lose you, you just cut off the senses and it's just all this one like thing so that was my my story that I wanted to tell you about and it was pretty cool and I hope to do that again you know what it reminded me of is those those um, pictures that Oh gosh, this is going to be terrible, but I have one on my iPad. <laughs> it's one of those like blurry, like it just looks like a pattern of some sort. And then if you focus your eyeballs like in one spot, then you can notice like a 3D image come popping out. I imagine they probably make yoga ones because the one that is on my iPad is for like sex positions. <laughs> And I remember as a kid, I used to be obsessed with those, yeah, magic eyes, yeah. I was obsessed with those as a kid for, like, animals and, like, stuff like that. And it that's exactly how it kind of felt doing that. It was like you just let it, like, not focus. Because you can't really focus whenever you're doing that. You are actually just, like, unfocusing your eye. So, I... I thought that was really cool, and that, that is what it reminded me of, though. And now I remember I have to delete that weird app off of my iPad. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Anything else that anyone would like to say before I sign off? Thank you for being here this whole time, Jules. This is crazy. You're, like, my new best friend. I can't believe it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God. That's how I feel. It feels to relax the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, it was very relaxing feeling. It was crazy how I could like feel my pupils. It's not very common that you can feel your pupils. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I feel like. My brain is kind of overloaded to today, and like, I don't know if I want to do another chapter tomorrow. Um, but what day do you want to do the next section of like the yoga practice part, Jules? Did you hear me? Tomorrow, maybe I'm. <laughs> Lisa, did you have anything to say also? I'm, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe you meant, like, message you tomorrow? Is that what you said? <laughs> Because I'm thinking of, like, taking a mental break tomorrow so that I can kind of, like, let it all sink in. And then I would be up for more, like, Thursday, if you were up for some Thursday. Or if not Thursday, then we could do Monday again. It's just totally up to you. Either of those two would work for me. This used to be $20 new. This is only like $12 now. Okay. Yeah, so I can message you Thursday. I get home again probably around 10, so if you want to do it at night, that's fine. Or before, like, 
4 o'clock on Thursday. Alright. Time for me to get caught up on my blog. I have not been posting my blog stuff the past two or three days. That's fine. <laughs> I think that... Um... I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll probably just, like, not do a journal scope, maybe, to, to, on Thursday. And, and try to figure out how to, like, start making it more concise. However, I feel like maybe, like, being able to share the, the beginning parts kind of made me positive that we're like on the same page and we're kind of interpreting it the same and then only if there's something like really really important to like discuss then I think we'll we'll we can like do a, like a one point like what was our favorite point type of thing so and like I said if at any time I'm talking like so much that you don't have to actually be in here the whole time it was more like so I could get the crap out of my head I think if we share, it's better than just a question type of thing. I agree. I think so, too. Alright, so Thursday we'll do some more reading. And tomorrow I'm going to do a question of the day. I just don't know what the question will be yet. It'll be tomorrow. And I think I might watch Avatar <laughs> right now. I kind of feel like really thinking and letting everything kind of settle and like kind of like displacing all this information on Avatar. So good night and thank you again for sharing this awesome book. I'm learning so much and I'm getting to practice the crazy Sanskrit that I sound like a very embarrassing traveler. <laughs> I do sleep but I sleep during the day. I, fall, I go to sleep normally around 4 o'clock and wake up at like 12 o'clock because I teach at night so and I'm a very much a night owl my mom and my brother and my brother's girlfriend we all were up last night until 5 o'clock out at that fire and then they left at like 5 o'clock and then my mom and I talked until like 5.30 and then I didn't go to sleep until like 6.30 she had to get up and work at like 7 she's crazy pants but that's okay. <laughs> Alright, do the thing. Namaste. Love. You. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I could send you my schedule if you want. <laughs>